Hello. This charming gentleman is Andrei Kellin, and he's the Russian ambassador to the United Kingdom. A well-known diplomat of the 17th century, or the late 16th century and the 17th century, was a chap called uh, Sir Henry Wotton, who described... Um, who described a diplomat as a man, an honest man, who lies abroad uh, for the good of his country. I want to point out that the word lie there meant, also meant to stay in one place. In the 17th century, it didn't just mean telling an untruth. Uh, so, uh, and we still see echoes of that in the word lie as well. But yes, uh, he's, uh, this is, uh, I don't know how honest he is, but he's certainly lying abroad uh, for the good of his country, that's for sure. Now, he, he, he did, conducted this interview with great aplomb. Uh, he dismissed her questions, uh, sometimes dishonestly, but I know why. I don't bear him any animosity for that. He's just doing his job. Uh, but... Uh, there was one point that she she asked him a question and he answered it and he sort of let the cat out of the bag. And I'm just going to... I do recommend you watch the interview, by the way. He's doing a lot of deflection. And at one point... Oh, yes. At one point, she lists some abuses uh, listed by the UN Commission. And at that point, I thought, That's, this is not very nice. She, she came up with a couple of particularly unpleasant incidents. Now, there are always going to be unpleasant inc incidents in a war. So it's not, to be, it's not to be a surprise, that sort of thing. Uh, it was just a horrific incident, by the way, and that's why maybe you should watch the interview. I'll leave a link in the description. But what he says um, is, oh, that's just internet gossip. Now, if, if he were being at all moral, he might have said, well, I don't know the facts of that, but if it did happen, then our army will certainly investigate it because our soldiers are better than that or, or something along those lines. But he didn't. And he didn't because everyone knows that the Russian army has acted with singular brutality during this war in many cases. And I don't know... Uh, whether he felt he couldn't uh, afford to lift the lid on that particular can of worms or whether he just thought, well, if I airily uh, dismiss it as internet gossip, uh, then it'll go away. But I didn't think much of him for that. But that was not a revelation. This is, and I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, that's uh, 1636. And the context is this. The interviewer is asking uh, Mr. Kellin, do you say Mr. Kellin for uh, an ambassador? All right, well, anyway, uh, he, she asks him, is your son fighting? And he says, no, he's past the military age. And in any case, uh, they'll, uh, the, the conscription has stopped because we have enough soldiers there. And, and then he says this, and she didn't pick up on this, and I'm not sure that many people would. I did because I've done a lot of context, uh, a lot of textual analysis uh, in my career, so these things jump out at me. All right, it's around here. Hang on, let's listen. I'm the group, and uh, we do believe that it's, we have now sufficient strength over the year for protection of land that is now part of Russian Federation. Did you hear that? For protection of land that is now part of Russian Federation. In that, he's telling you that it wasn't then. 
part of Russian Federation. He knows that. Uh, but the whole story for the war that the Russians are plying through various media is that this was always part of Russia. Just like Crimea was always part of Russia. And we have to remember that in 2014, Russia invaded Ukraine and actually established control of Crimea, which was a part of Ukraine. And all the West, including myself, I didn't get too exercised about it, tried to shrug it off because nobody wanted to start a fight with Russia. And then this latest happened and they, everyone realised they had to. Now, you can say that America started the fight because, you know, Biden uh, may have some, may be beholden in some way to Ukraine and has to, uh, has been blackmailed into fighting. But that's, uh, you can say that. I, I don't know the truth of it. But certainly Britain, Poland, Germany, France, Italy, uh, that's nothing to do with America. And Ukraine can't be blackmailing all of them. But they, we can all see the, the, the dangers here of allowing Russia to take over uh, another next door sovereign country and that it won't stop there. And the ambassador, let's just go back to that. Let's just hear what the ambassador says again. See this possibility because he was never, uh, he was never trained as a soldier. He has no profession over the year, but it might happen, of course. Why not? Why not? He might be called up. He might, but no, not at the moment, because the calling up uh, has finished a month, uh, some time ago, and uh, we do believe that it's, we have now sufficient strength over the year for protection of land that is now part of the Russian Federation. Now part of the Russian Federation or rather part of Russian Federation, because he dropped the definite article, which Russians tend to do. OK, there you are. That is the, what the ambassador says. And we should be aware that he just admitted that Russia invaded a sovereign country and took a chunk of land uh, and declared it to be part of Russia when it was not previously. OK, I'm Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. I do urge you to uh, subscribe to Twitter, Gab and or Parlour, where I am at Granny Opterix, because YouTube tends not to let you know when uh, I've uploaded a new video. So that's the only way you're going to find out, because I always post a new video on one on Twitter, Gab and Parlour. You can help my channel by liking this video, by sharing it and by subscribing, whichever platform you're on. And also by checking, if you're on YouTube, that your subscription is still going because I've had a lot of complaints that subscriptions are being dropped as well. Right. Oh, you can help me financially as well. Uh, buy me a coffee or one of the links below. And um, thanks for listening. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.